This ingenious breathing exercise is a turbo for you to easily get into relaxation. Take five to eight minutes for this exercise. Count your breath to five, hold your breath to five, exhale to five, hold your breath to five. someone to a fear of something, you have them imagine being in it and working on practicing surrendering to the fear or getting beyond the fear, relaxing and calming down. And mm -hmm. so you're breaking, it's called inhibition. You start inhibiting that conditioning process because you're having the thought and you're choosing to not feel that emotion or begin to self-regulate a new emotion. And the research shows that if you do that properly, there are, there are afferent fibers from the heart that go right to the amygdala, straight to the amygdala. <laughs> and what it does is it shuts the lights out for fear. It lowers the volume for pain and suffering. And it cools off the circuits for that kind of tenacity and aggression. And what happens is you get this resetting of a baseline. And so now the person is more safe that they're, they're not anticipating the next threat, the next danger. They're not looking around the corner for the predator. Their body's not in that vigilance. Their body's more in the present moment. And so, so um, you begin to desensitize yourself when you confront the fear or the, you confront the possible scenario and you begin to choose a different emotion or you break from that emotion. And because people do some, the, uh, they do the opposite really well. They think about the worst thing that's going to happen to them in their lives, and then they say, no, it could even get worse. <laughs> and they begin to emotionally feel the fear before it happens. And they're conditioning their brain and body to subconsciously become the mind of fear. Do it enough times, and your body is going to have a panic attack without you. Try as you may. To control it with your conscious mind you won't be able to because you programmed it subconsciously and then you start worrying about the next time it's going to happen and it's that very very uh, state of being that begins to create the next one and so then the doctor says it's chemical imbalance in your brain it's a hardware problem well the insight doesn't change anything and when you have that first panic attack and you're in the supermarket the moment you feel that change in your inner state you're looking around to see in your outer environment what's causing it and you think it's an airplane or it's a supermarket and so then you know there you, uh, you know you take the drug but the the drug doesn't heal the condition. In fact, you'll still stay away from supermarkets or airplanes. So then it's a software problem. Your father was overbearing, he was a perfectionist. He was really hard on you. So now you have the insight. My father was overbearing. Does it heal it? No. So then you go to the psychic. The psychic says that you were burned at the stake uh, in the 1500s. Uh, you were a charismatic Christian in the south of France. And, oh, yeah, now you start reaffirming it. Yeah, this is why I am this way. Or Mercury's in retrograde. Really? <laughs> 93 million miles away, some planet is controlling who my, my that's what's reason for my fear. Uh, people will come up with all kinds of reasons, but sooner or later, you're going to have to confront yourself. We have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of brain scans of people who have had anxiety and that just don't have it anymore. These are professionals. These are dentists, engineers. Uh, these are uh, nurses, people that really were struggling a great deal with it. You cannot be anxious if you're in the present moment, and mm. it's just a skill. So, so I think that, that our, we can use it f in a positive way. Yeah. Or what am I going to do if I feel that? I mean, yeah. we have activities in every one of our week-long events where we know that people can do brain and heart coherence. We've got the, we've got the scans to prove it. And then we say, okay, now that we know that you can do it, uh, let's go 38 floors up on, uh, on the hotel and let's repel off the side of the hotel. And this is not about an adrenal rush. This is actually about the opposite. We got heart rate monitors on them. And this is the moment. This is the moment when you're standing up there. Can you breathe? Can you stay in your body? Can you relax? And the more you rehearse, I always say to them, what are you going to do when you get up there? <laughs> because if you don't know what you're going to do, you're, you're going to throw a program in there and you're going to get fearful and go unconscious. But if you can stay conscious and you're reviewing what you're going to do and you start practicing, you're priming your brain and body for, for that experience. So what's the significance of that? Overcome that in brain and heart coherence. You'll walk into your life and you'll use the same thing in the same circumstances when you're faced with fear in your life. And you won't be gripped by it. And if you just went off 38 floors in heart and brain coherence and you mastered it, 
you probably will look at the problems in your life as so much less intimidating mm. than what you just did. And, and people, people leave their fear. So, so we want to put them in situations that would normally evoke a strong emotion or a program and say, yeah, that's natural, that's normal, but what would supernatural do? So let's practice that. And so we, we have a challenge activity, uh, that's where I just came from. And, uh, and again, putting people in those situations where they don't think they can go any further, and then they go further. And that's what we want them to do because going further means they're going against thousands of years of programming, thousands of years of fear and conditioning. And, uh, and, and, and when it happens, uh, they're liberating energy. And that's available energy for them to heal with. That's available energy for them to create a new life with. 70% of the time, people live in survival, live in stress. And that invisible field of electromagnetism that's surrounding the body, that resource of energy is going to be squandered into chemistry. And every time you react, the field around your body shrinks a little bit more and you become more matter, less energy, more particle, less wave. And then the hormones of stress cause you to narrow your focus on the cause. So when you narrow your focus on the cause, you're focusing on the particle in quantum physics, matter, and your senses are so conditioned into focusing on matter that you're beginning to experience separation. So the more I live by the hormones of stress, the more I have separation. There's separation between me and you, and my senses are fooling me into it, but the unified field says there is no separation. So then, if you're addicted to those emotions and you're, you're, they're heightening your senses, that's what they do in survival, and you become a materialist and your field around your body is shrinking, then you're going to feel separate from the quantum field. And it's going to take a long time for you to create what you want because you're separate from the field and you will be matter trying to change matter. So the moment you begin to activate the center, this is our connection. This is our first connection to the unified field. The moment energy moves into this center and we've measured this the field around the body expands and once their energy in the heart guess where it goes straight up to the brain the heart acts as an amplifier and literally it begins to increase energy in the brain so now once that field begins to expand and you get beyond you take all of your attention off your body off the people in your life the things you own place you need to be in time itself and you become pure consciousness and you take all of your attention out of this three-dimensional reality out of the known and you start putting your attention on that field there is a technique that we teach to do that and you begin to feel connected from that field now the faster the frequency the higher the emotion you feel the shorter amount of time it's going to take for it to appear in your life because the faster the frequency, the closer you're getting to oneness and wholeness. So then when you teach people how to get beyond all of the elements in this three-dimensional reality and begin to open their heart, their heart in that frequency is their connection to the field. The moment they open their heart, they become more energy than matter, more wave than particle. And now that becomes the amplifier that begins to generate a whole new set of thoughts, a whole new consciousness. And that heart center then makes us want to serve, makes us want to take care of one another, to inform one another, to help one another, to give to one another, to heal one another. That's, That's what creates unity. We know this to be the case. We've taken a thousand people in a room. We've set 50 people in the front of the room wearing HRV monitors, heart rate monitors. And we've told the entire audience to move into heart coherence and brain coherence and have the intent for the greatest good for the people sitting in the front of the room. And in a matter of seconds, all their hearts go into coherence at the exact same time, in the exact same day, in the exact same meditation. They're being influenced by energy and their autonomic nervous system is being entrained to a new frequency. So imagine then, you begin to change your...